You're listening to the Music Educator Podcast with your host, Bill Stevens, the 21st Century Music Educator Man. Podcasting from beautiful Leesburg, Virginia. Welcome to the Music Educator Podcast, bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow. Here's your host and fellow music educator, Bill Stevens. Welcome once again to the Music Educator Podcast. My name is Bill Stevens. I'll be your host for today. And today in Season 4, Episode 11, we're going to talk about parent communication techniques. Let's get started. All educators are tasked with communicating with parents at one point or another, being in sync with your workflow, and knowing the appropriate reasons for contacting parents helps the effectiveness of helping foster a child's development. Often, we only contact parents if there is some sort of behavior problem and only if it's necessary. However, studies show that conveying good news to parents is just as important. Consequently, teachers cannot rely on parents contacting them. The benefits of regular communication will pay off tenfold when we, as educators, Take the extra time to keep parents involved and informed. Now, today's episode comes from the resources documented in Evan Feldman and Ari Constant's book, Instrumental Music Education, Teaching with the Musical and Practical in Harmony. I highly recommend this book to any of you out there and all music educators. Reasons for Contacting Parents There are three main reasons for contacting parents. One, to be positive, two, to be preventive, and three, to be reactionary. Feldman and Constance's book, Instrumental Education, Teaching with Musical and Practical in Harmony, states that educators should make parent contact positive and productive by approaching the conversation compassionately, professionally, and logically. Ultimately, we want our students to become more successful rather than just placing blame. Sometimes, this means that as music educators, we need to word our communication with parents in a way that makes sense to a normal parent rather than talking to them like they are a degreed music professional. Most importantly, whatever happens in the conversation, be sure to stay calm, courteous, and in control. If your emotions are running hot, perhaps try outlining or scripting what you need to say. Then practice in front of a mirror, maintaining this idea of staying calm, courteous, and in control. To help steer your script or communication in a way that assists you in staying calm, courteous, and in control, try some of these useful phrases that Feldman and Constance have accumulated. I want what is best for your child. How may I help? Is there anything I can do at school to help your child? I have been frustrated by, it is important that, I am concerned with, Susie is not progressing, Billy would benefit from, and Carol needs to take more responsibility for. If a student disrupts the class, consider using the following phrases. Timmy needs to follow directions in class. John initiates discussion around him when he should be listening to instructions. She creates a class distraction by, if the student shows improvement, consider using the following phrases. Tommy has shown consistent progress since the beginning of the marking period. Sam has been showing more self-confidence. If a student is doing exceptionally well, consider using these phrases. Alexis is a pleasure to have in class. Brian is excited to be in band. Blake has worked well in collaborative groups. And if a student has attendance issues, consider this phrase. Maria's excessive absences are limiting her progress in that of her section and the orchestra. In this type of scenario, be sure to prepare any helpful records or specific examples of the issue at hand. Then use a systematic, well-organized phone outline for the call. Scripting the phone call. 
Earlier, we recommended to create a script for a parent phone call, especially if there is potential for emotions to fall into play from either side of the connection. The following is a sample script you can modify to have as a positive and or constructive experience with the student's parents. First, state your name, position, and what school you're teaching at. For instance, hello, this is Mr. Stevens, the band director at Mustang Middle School. Next, ask for the student's parent by their last name. Note some parents have different last names. For example, may I please speak to either Mr. Martinez or Mrs. Cruz Martinez? If someone other than the parents had initially answered the phone, be sure to reintroduce yourself once the parent picks up. Begin the conversation in a positive and non-controversial manner. For example, I am calling you to share a situation we are having with Jennifer in course class. I am confident there is something we can do together to get her on the right track. Present the situation occurring in the class and describe the specific behavior being demonstrated by the child. For instance, Howard has forgotten his trombone five times over the past two weeks. Now, clearly explain how his behavior hampers his progress in class. For example, every time Howard comes into band without his instrument, he is unable to participate. If this continues, he will fall further and further behind, which will ultimately affect his grade and the ability to be successful in band. Clearly explain what behaviors are expected from all students in your class. Make it a point that you are not signaling out their child. For example, students are expected to bring their instruments to class each and every day. Next, wait and let the parent respond. This is particularly important even if you don't agree with what the parent is saying. Only try to redirect the parent if they repeat and ramble on in an off-task manner. Again, be sure to redirect the parent in a polite way as to get the conversation moving in a constructive manner. For instance, I certainly appreciate your concerns, Mrs. Martinez, but for the purpose of this specific call, let's stay on the issue regarding Howard's instrument. Regarding main points, restate or paraphrase what the parent has said. This shows that you are listening and gives you an opportunity to confirm that your understanding of what was said is accurate. For example, what I hear you say is that Howard is having a hard time remembering to bring his instrument to school because he cannot find it when he is catching the bus in the morning. Brainstorm solutions. Start by offering a concrete solution suggestion to help improve the situation. Next, invite the parents to share their recommendations. For example, a great idea that works for many students is to have Howard place his trombone at the front door before he goes to bed at night. This way, he cannot forget where the trombone is before he catches the bus in the morning. Support the parent by asking if there is anything that you can do to help their child in your class. Provide the parents your contact information so that they may touch base with you if they have any other future questions. For example, Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. My phone number is 1777-123-4567. Finally, end the conversation in a respectful manner. Thank you for your time. Have a great evening. Meeting parents face-to-face. -face. There will be some scenarios where parents will want to have a face-to-face -face conference with you. Similar to phone calls, this needs to be implemented in a positive and respectful, and non-threatening atmosphere. Feldman and Consense recommend doing this in a way that is not behind a desk. Often this visual connotation implies a sense of confrontational situation. Rather, sit in a chair near the parent to visually communicate a collaborative vibe rather than one that is hostile. Feldman and Constance also recommends avoiding these negative communication tactics. Accusing the parent. Placing blame. Lecturing the parent. Using the phrase, your child and you. Acting disrespectfully and losing composure. Becoming defensive. 
inappropriately interrupting the parent. Remember, if a parent feels that they are getting attacked, they will tend to shut down. As a result, the following may occur. The parent may not support you or help you improve the situation. The parent may complain to other parents or even your bosses. The parent may get offended and start to verbally attack you. If for some reason the parent starts to initiate any of these last situations, it is imperative that you defuse any wrongdoing. Then redirect the parent's attention so that they understand that you are there for their child's best interest. Ultimately, both parties are expected to respect one another. If control of a parent-teacher conference is not working out, then politely and firmly end the conversation. Request that if the parent would like to speak more, they will need to make an appointment with the principal. Once the scenario has reached this point, it is in your best interest as the educator to fill in the principal with all the specifics before the parent calls. As a result, the principal will have a better idea on how to support you, the child, and the parent. Email decorum. Since COVID-19 and the active implementation of the virtual learning environment, email has become one of the most used forms of communication with students and parents. It is important that when communicating with parents over email, that every teacher's writing is professional and respectful. Education emails should maintain a sense of formality and include the following strategies according to Feldman and Contents. Always include a salutation or greeting at the beginning of an email. Include a comma after the initial greeting. Structure the email in descending order of formality. If you are writing an email that goes back and forth between you and a colleague, it is okay to omit the greeting after the first email. Always use a concise subject heading. This could include subject, after school rehearsal, subject, reminders about field trip, subject, rehearsal schedule. Absolutely be sure not to use the following. Emoji cons, all caps, hard to read fonts, short script, for example, RU and LOL, background patterns, which make emails hard to read, be sure to avoid using reply all, proofread emails before you press the send button, always remain courteous and polite, keep school related topics relevant and avoid personal information, and finally, do not friend or instant message students on your personal social networks. Keep a parent communication log. As an educator, you should track every conversation regarding student behavior. By tracking progress, it is easier to keep parents informed and keeps you, as the educator, accountable and protected to a limited degree. By keeping a communication log, it makes it easier for administrators to understand what is going on in the face of an unhappy parent. In addition, this documentation can be used in a court of law in some situations where there may be attendance or abuse related circumstances. My recommendation is to keep this parent contact log in either a binder, a notebook, or stored digitally. Google Forms is an easy to use software that I have used for most of my parent contact logs. And because I have the app on my phone, I can handily pull it up almost anywhere where I can access the internet. Possible items you may want to record in a parent contact log may include a student's name, the year, the time in the day, instrument, interests, activities, parent guardian's names, parent guardian's phone number or email, a brief summary of what was discussed and determined. Mass parent communication. Being able to communicate with large number of parents is important. This is easy to do, however, do not be afraid of trying several communication tactics. For example, mass communication through email. If you mass email parents, be sure to clearly follow the previously mentioned email decorum. There are many school-sponsored email systems that teachers are required to use. 
it is my recommendation to insert your teacher email address into the primary recipient location and all of the parent email addresses into the blind carbon copy BCC location. Mass communication through phone trees. Another fast way to get the word out is to use your phone trees. The idea of this tactic is to call the first parent. Then he or she calls their assigned family or families to spread the word. Mass communication through websites and the school's LMS. School websites and learning management systems are great ways to keep your parents informed. Websites allow for 24-7 access for parents to catch up on what's going on in their child's classes. In contrast, many learning management systems have built-in communication delivery functions such as those in Schoology and Google Classroom. Additional mass communication methods include the use of calendars, newsletters, robocalls, blogs, apps like the Remind app, and many more that are being invented at an exponential rate. Final thoughts. Reasons for contacting parents come in various forms. In Evan Feldman and R.A. Constance's book, Instrumental Music Education, Teaching with the Musical and Practical in Harmony, it is clear that these authors understand the importance of strong communication and organizational skills. I hope the recommendations outlined by Feldman and Constance have provided a helpful insight into your organizational workflow in and out of the music education profession. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time I have for today. I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode of the Music Educator Podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to share this craft with lovers of music and educators like you. If you found value in today's episode, please feel free to comment and rate us on the Music Educator Podcast app, Apple Podcasts, or any other podcast aggregator. Also, check us out on our blog at bandbuzz.org, our podcast website, themusiceducatorpodcast.com, or our TPT or Boom Card stores. Thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you join us next time. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Music Educator Podcast. For the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow, you can subscribe to our podcast on every podcast aggregator or download the Music Educator app for free in the Apple or Google Play app stores. Furthermore, visit our blog at www.bandbuzz.org for additional music education resources. We will see you on the next episode of the Music Educator Podcast. And remember, music can change the world. Music can change the world.